It's the world's finest equipment for repairing windshield brakes. Aegis engineers these tools and materials to be long-lasting and easy to use. Repairing windshields with this advanced system is simple. In the next few minutes, we will be showing you step-by-step step how to use the Aegis system in your shop or on the road. After viewing this program, you'll also want to review the manual that comes with your kit. This manual not only tells how to operate the Aegis equipment, but it can also be used as a quick reference for troubleshooting difficult brakes. It is stored behind this foam in the cover for easy reference. After you've seen this program and reviewed the manual, you'll be ready to get to work on some practice windshields. It's a good idea to prepare a practice windshield so the brake can stabilize overnight. Get a scrap windshield and make 10 or 12 brakes. Make both bullseye and combination brakes. It's important to do these kinds of practice repairs before working on a customer's windshield. Before we begin the repair process, let's take a quick look at the various pieces of equipment in the Aegis kit. This is the repair fixture. The suction cup attaches to the windshield. The repair fixture has two adjusting knobs to locate this fixture chamber over the brake. This rubber quad ring fits into the fixture chamber to create a sealed chamber on the windshield to hold a liquid polymer. On this end of the fixture chamber is a connection for the hose that links the chamber and the pump. The pump can create either vacuum or pressure. The vacuum removes air from the brake while the pressure forces polymer deep into the brake. The pump gauge lets you monitor both vacuum and pressure. The Aegis kit also includes this inspection mirror. The suction cup lets you position the mirror right below the brake to keep an eye on the repair. This pen light helps you examine the brake under repair. Each kit comes with a supply box with six bottles of specially formulated liquid polymer. Each bottle repairs about 15 brakes. The supply box also contains needles and syringes to dispense the polymer, spare quad rings, O-rings for the pump handle, and razor blades. This small cleaning brush cleans the hose and sockets. This one cleans the fixture chamber. Glycerin helps condition the suction cups so they'll grip the windshield firmly. Your Aegis kit comes with either a battery-operated or a 12-volt ultraviolet lamp. The 12-volt model can be powered by 110 volts, a 12-volt battery, or a cigarette lighter socket. The entire Aegis kit is packed in a sturdy carrying case, which holds everything you need to make first-class repairs the Aegis way. If you have the Aegis Kit 2000, you'll also have a cordless drill and flex shaft, a pit fill kit, and an extra repair fixture for doing two repairs at the same time. It's also important before you begin a repair to become familiar with the different kinds of brakes that can occur and whether or not they are repairable. Windshields are made from laminated glass, which is actually two layers of glass with a plastic laminate in the middle. When just the outside layer of glass is broken, you'll be able to make a good repair. If the inside layer is broken or the laminate is damaged, the windshield must be replaced. When a stone breaks a windshield, there will be an impact point or pit where the stone hit and chipped the glass. Usually, the impact point is open to the inside of the brake. Brakes and cracks differ in the amount and shape of separation inside the brake. The secret to a successful repair is filling these cracks and separations with the Aegis polymer as completely as possible. There are basically five types of repairable brakes. A bullseye looks like a round, smooth brake with an impact point or pit in the center. The brake is a clear, separated cone of glass. There will sometimes be cracks in the cone. When you repair a bullseye, fill in the separation and any cracks in the cone. All that remains is a small surface pit. A half moon brake has a half circle separation around the impact point. A star brake has cracks of varying lengths and widths radiating from the impact point. This brake can be difficult to repair because the area to be filled can be extremely narrow. A crack can run from one or both sides of an impact point. It can also be a challenging brake to repair. Finally, a combination brake includes two or more of the other types of brakes. Combination brakes are easier to repair because they usually allow easy penetration of the polymer. Not all brakes are repairable. You've got to take a good look at a brake to make a professional judgment about repairing or replacing the windshield. 
both the extent and the location of the damage should be considered. Because safety is an issue, the best general guideline is to be prudent. Be safe. As a general guideline, we recommend repairing no brakes over one and a quarter inches in diameter. Trying to repair such large areas might affect the integrity of the windshield, and it will certainly be more visible than your customer would like. Second, we do not recommend repairing brakes in the driver's vision area. This area can be defined in various ways. The critical or wiper area is swept by the driver's wiper blades. The acute area is a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch rectangle directly in front of the driver's eyes. The primary vision area is the entire driver's side of the windshield except for four inches on the top and sides and five inches on the bottom. The acute area is the standard most often observed in the USA and we recommend you make no repairs in this area. Now that you are familiar with the equipment included in the kit and the kinds of brakes you might encounter, let's look at how to make an Aegis repair. Aegis repairs must be made out of direct sunlight, so do them indoors. If you are outside, try to at least find shade for the vehicle or shade the brake area with a shop towel. Then, protect your customer's hood from your tools and the Aegis polymer with a shop cloth. Test your ultraviolet lamp now, rather than in the middle of the repair. Hold it to your chest to see the reflected light. Safety glasses are important protection when repairing a brake, so remember to wear them throughout the repair process. With a razor blade or a probe, gently pick away dirt and loose glass from the brake area. Use an alcohol-based cleaner to clean the brake area. Spray the cleaner on the cloth, not the brake itself. If you think there may be water in the brake, heat will evaporate the moisture. Dry it with sunlight, a heat gun, or hair dryer. Too much heat on the windshield can make a brake run, so be careful. Get the inspection mirror from the kit and moisten the suction cup with a glass cleaner. Mount the inspection mirror on the inside of the windshield. Center the mirror on the brake. Roll back the edge of the cup with your thumb and roll the mirror into place like this. This will help you monitor the brake during the repair. Now you're ready to set up the Aegis repair fixture. This repair fixture is the heart of the Aegis system. To mount it, remove the fixture chamber from the foot. Loosen the top knob so the yoke moves freely. Hold the fixture with the plunger towards you and swivel the yoke so that the leg is pointing to the left at a right angle to the plunger. Pull the yoke to fully extend the leg and lightly tighten the top knob. Loosen the side knob and position the foot so that it is parallel with the flat surface and raised up about a half inch. Lightly tighten the side knob. Procedures are a little different for flat and curved windshields. On flat windshields, position the fixture with the chamber opening directly over the brake with the impact point at the edge of the chamber opening. Hold the fixture against the glass and pump the plunger about 20 times or until the red line disappears. Do not be concerned if you cannot see the impact point. Further adjustments are required. When making repairs on the curved part of the windshield, loosen the side knob, place the foot on the glass over the brake, rotate the fixture around the brake until the front and side of the foot is flat on the glass. Holding the foot flat on the glass so the impact point is at the heel, push the fixture against the glass and pump the plunger until the red line disappears. Lightly tighten the side knob. If you have difficulty attaching the suction cup to a very curved windshield, lubricate the suction cup liberally with glycerin and attach it to a flatter area near the brake. Then, slide the suction cup into position. To position the foot flat against the glass, loosen the side knob and position the foot with the heel no more than the sixteenth of an inch off the glass while the toe rests directly on the glass.
The finger grip on your razor blade is a good gauge of the ideal height of the heel from the glass. Hold the leg in position and retighten the side knob firmly. Check the tightness of the leg by pulling upwards on the foot. If you do not tighten the side knob firmly enough, the leg may lift and rupture the quad seal under the pressure cycle. Now you'll make your final adjustment. Loosen the top knob and reposition the foot so the impact point is slightly below the center of the chamber opening. This will give the best coverage of the impact point without using additional polymer. Tighten the knob firmly. Prepare the fixture chamber by making sure the quad ring is seated flat in the chamber with the three dimples to the inside of the chamber. Our next step is inserting the polymer. Aegis polymer is a special chemical that bonds tightly to the original windshield to produce a clear and permanent repair. But it's important that you keep it out of the sunlight while you're working. The ultraviolet light in sunlight will cause it to harden. Before you work with polymer, take these precautions. Read all of the information in the label of the bottle. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses and you have adequate ventilation. If you get polymer in your eyes, flush with water for 15 minutes. If any is swallowed, drink two glasses of water and see a doctor immediately. If you get any polymer on your skin, wash thoroughly with soap and water. Before you remove the cap, turn the bottle gently a few times to mix it. Mount a needle on the syringe and insert it into the polymer and draw out a few drops. Close the polymer bottle. Put the needle tip in the channel of the quad ring and put a little polymer around the whole ring. This will lubricate the ring to slide on the glass and create a tight seal. Now screw the fixture chamber into the foot of the repair fixture. Now this is important. Turn until you feel the foot start to lift off the glass. Then give it another half turn. Make sure the impact point isn't covered by the quad ring. Be sure you can't see the red line of the plunger and to check that the foot is still parallel to the glass. If the heel is slightly higher than the toe, there shouldn't be a problem. However, the toe should not be higher than the heel. Reinsert the needle into the polymer and withdraw 0.15 cc. Be sure you're using the right scale. It should have 1.000 cc at the top. Draw up the polymer so the liquid stops at the 0.15 cc mark. Then insert the needle all the way into the plug on the fixture chamber. Push the plunger down to dispense the polymer. Keeping the syringe and needle in the plug, remove the plunger to let some air into the barrel. Now insert the plunger and push it all the way down a few times to dispense all of the polymer. There should be enough polymer to cover the impact point completely. The air bubbles should always be above the impact point. Occasionally, you will run into a break that may need a little more, but be cautious. Monitor the polymer level closely throughout the repair. As the brake begins to accept the polymer under pressure, this level will drop. Anytime the air bubble is below the impact point, add polymer. Larger combination brakes will use more polymer than star brakes, bullseyes, and cracks. When you are working on windshields that are unusually vertical, position the impact point a little lower in the chamber opening. This will enable you to maintain impact point coverage without adding more polymer, which might cause polymer to flow into the connecting hose. Basically, the repair process consists of three cycles, pressure, vacuum, and pressure. We use a short initial low pressure cycle to see if the brake has a pathway for the polymer to flow. This first pressure should be no longer than one minute. Attach the black hose socket to the plug on the fixture chamber like this. Attach the brass hose socket to the pump in the same way. Push in the left manifold button to set the pump to pressure. Pressure builds very quickly, within a single stroke, so start very slowly. Increase pressure to between 10 and 20 PSI, and you'll start to see polymer flow into the brake. If the polymer doesn't flow, the pathway may be blocked. You'll have to get in there and clear it out. Rotate the arm and chamber an inch or two away from the brake and lightly retighten the arm down. Then, use a razor blade, carbide probe, or the Aegis drill to clear the pathway. Move the foot and fixture chamber back into place. Check the polymer level. If it's below the impact point, add some. Then repressurize. 
Don't overpressurize, or you can start the brake running. If you see a run beginning, quickly release the pressure by pressing the vacuum button. Then, push the pressure button again and slowly rebuild the pressure. Keep the pressure at a lower level than before. Remember, keep this first pressure on no more than one minute. After a minute has passed, press the manifold button to release pressure. That's our first cycle. Now we'll go into the vacuum cycle. Press the right button to set vacuum. Begin with four to six rapid full strokes. A typical range of vacuum will be 20 to 25 inches of mercury. As air is drawn from the brake, bubbles appear at the impact point. Trapped air appears as black spots. Sometimes during vacuum, you'll see infrequent small bubbles coming through the quad ring every five or 10 seconds because of an imperfect seal. Ignore them. They will have little effect on your repair. Other times you may see consistent bubbling that slows down under vacuum, but which doesn't stop. This comes from air flowing into the chamber from almost invisible radiant cracks. As long as the bubbling slows down dramatically under vacuum, your repair will be unaffected. When they slow down, stop, or you've held vacuum for 10 minutes, end your vacuum cycle. Draw two more quick pump strokes to evacuate any remaining air bubbles and then release vacuum. After your vacuum cycle, it's time for a second pressure cycle to fill the brake with polymer. Again, set your manifold button to pressure and build pressure cautiously, this time to between 25 and 35 PSI. Continue pressure until the brake fills with polymer, usually 5 to 15 minutes, sometimes a little longer. Every windshield brake is unique, but here are some rules of thumb. Bullseyes usually need lower pressure, 25 to 30 PSI. Star brakes need more pressure, 25 to 35 PSI. If the only unfilled parts of the brake are the tips of radiant cracks, 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch, release pressure, disconnect the hose, and back the fixture chamber off a half turn. This will allow the cracks to fill by capillary action. Allow a few minutes for the polymer to flow in. Normally this will finish the job and you can go right to curing the polymer. But sometimes brakes can be stubborn. If a brake doesn't fill, you'll need to start another vacuum cycle with heat followed by another pressure cycle. Watch carefully. Make sure you retighten the fixture chamber if you've loosened it. Switch your pump to vacuum and draw four to six full strokes to get a vacuum reading of between 20 and 25 inches of mercury. Use a butane lighter to apply some heat to the back of the brake. Using a circular motion, work the flame from the edge to the center of the brake, rounding up the air toward the impact point. When the bubbling action becomes fast, remove the heat. The hot glass will expand to force out the air. Give the glass some time to cool. When the bubbling stops or slows down to a bubble approximately every five seconds, give the pump two more full strokes to pull out any remaining air. Then you'll go another pressure cycle. Maintain pressure of 25 to 35 PSI for just five minutes. This should fill the brake completely. You can stop pressure anytime you see that the brake's been filled. If everything is filled except for the tips, release pressure, disconnect the hose, and back off the fixture chamber until the quad ring is just touching the glass without losing the polymer. Allow it to set for one to two minutes. When the tips are filled, cure the polymer. If the brake still shows unfilled areas, Start another vacuum cycle with heat, followed by another pressure cycle. You can keep this up as long as the brake remains uncured and you see progress. Once the polymer is cured, you can't improve the repair. To cure the polymer, first disconnect the hose from the fixture chamber and set it and the pump aside. Then loosen the side knob, lift up on the leg and lightly retighten. Loosen the top knob. If you have the lamp holder, insert it. Swing the ultraviolet lamp over the brake and cure it. If you don't have the lamp holder, hold the lamp directly over the repair area. Keep it in place for two to two and a half minutes. Properly cured polymer is hard with a greasy surface, while uncured polymer feels wet. The final step in repair we call finishing up. To remove the fixture, Lift the tabs of the suction cup to release the fixture. Be careful not to drip the polymer on any paint. Use a razor blade to peel off excess polymer with smooth strokes. Remove the inspection mirror and then 
clean the windshield both inside and out with an alcohol-based glass cleaner and a soft cloth. Your repair is finished. As time goes on, you'll get more and more comfortable with the Aegis system and your confidence in what it can do for you and your customers will increase. The Aegis tools that make these kinds of expert repairs possible are very specialized and carefully engineered. In order to ensure these kinds of quality results year after year, you'll need to properly maintain your equipment. Let's quickly review both the regular and long-term maintenance you'll need to perform. For regular maintenance, when you put away your repair fixture, Clean the suction cup with an alcohol-based glass cleaner or alcohol. After approximately 15 cleanings, put a generous amount of glycerin on the area which touches the glass. Spread it on with your finger and wipe off the excess with a clean, lint-free cloth. Do the same with the inspection mirror. Each time you use your equipment, Bathe the quad ring with alcohol-based glass cleaner in your palm. Dry it with a damp, lint-free cloth. Clean the chamber housing and quick connect plug by using the cleaning brushes and alcohol. Run the bristles around the outside thread and inside the housing and plug. Check for polymer buildup on the threads on the quad ring groove. Keeping the needle in good shape is easy. Just clean it in any alcohol-based glass cleaner. Take the plunger out of the syringe and wipe both with a clean, damp cloth. Then, reinsert the plunger, but leave a little air space. Let the plunger and needle air dry before you reuse. Clean both hose ends and sockets with the hose cleaning brush. If you see polymer inside the hose, spray glass cleaner into the hose brush. Use compressed air, if possible, to dry. For long-term maintenance, after 15 repairs, use glycerin on a cotton swab to lubricate the gaskets inside the coupling. Also, apply a light oil to the shaft of the pump. Remove polymer buildup on the manifold plug here with the cleaning brush. Finally, check the O-ring at the base of the shaft and replace it if it shows wear. Check the batteries and battery chamber on your lamp frequently for leakage or corrosion. Finally, you'll need to lubricate your drill cable every 15 repairs. Unscrew the flex shaft housing the motor tool like this. Pull out this golden coil and coat it with a light grease. That covers the basic windshield repair with the Aegis system. By viewing this program and reviewing the manual that comes with the kit, you should have no problem mastering the step-by-step -step system of repair that you have just seen. Remember to use a practice windshield at first until you're comfortable with the process. We have also produced a videotape highlighting some special techniques and troubleshooting procedures using the Aegis system. Your printed manual includes an extensive list of these techniques, but the video will help explain some procedures that are easier to see than just read about. We highly recommend viewing that program after you've mastered the basic repair process. Quality engineering and ease of use. It's the world's finest equipment for repairing windshield brakes, the Aegis System. program, we introduced you to the precision engineered Aegis windshield repair equipment. We showed you the simple step-by-step -step repair process and shared tips on how to maintain your tools for years of trouble-free service. Now that you're familiar with the basics of the Aegis system, we'd like to share some special techniques and troubleshooting procedures that we think you'll find helpful. 
The first special technique is the use of the Aegis cordless drill with the carbide bit. It allows you to drill a channel for polymer to flow more easily into tough brakes. For some brakes, the drill can make a difference between a successful repair and a replacement, especially for brakes without impact points, brakes with obstructed openings, small cracks, star brakes, and cured repairs with air pockets. You'll get the best results by drilling through the impact point into the cracks of a brake. Not all cracks penetrate the glass the same. To determine the angle or direction in which the crack penetrates the glass, look at the crack from different angles. Look for the angle in which the crack is like a fine hairline. This will be the position in which the crack should be drilled. Proceed to drill in a straight up and down motion. Drill as little as you can and avoid drilling into the plastic laminate between the glass layers. Always use the drill at high speed when using a carbide burr and drill in a straight up and down motion. Let the tool do the work. Don't apply pressure. The second special technique is pit filling. Pit filling will fill the small depression at the impact point and give your customer a repair that is smooth to the touch. The special pit filler compound is different from the standard repair polymer. It cures harder to give a shinier finish and to withstand exposure to weather. Whether you use your razor blade or the Aegis drill, you will need to rough up the perimeter of the pit to improve the adhesion of the pit filler. Using a diamond ball burr, grind wherever pieces of glass are missing, both in the pit and in the clamshells surrounding the impact point. Also, remove any crushed glass in the impact point and any high spots within the pit. Be careful not to get too close to the laminate. Operate the drill at lower speed for better control. If you see air bubbles, use your razor blade to pick a path to them or remove them with the cordless rotary tool if it is required. Using the smaller needle provided with the pit filler, draw a small amount into the syringe. Place a drop on the glass just above the pit and let it flow into the pit on its own. If you need more filler, just add it. Place a mylar square onto the pit filler. Start from the bottom edge and catch the pit filler running down the glass. Bring it up and onto the pit. Work out any air bubbles before curing the adhesive. Cure the pit filler for at least three minutes, then remove the mylar. Now, hold the razor blade at a right angle to the glass and sweep it across the break to remove extra pit filler. The pit is now filled, but it has a dull surface. To put a shinier finish on the filled pit, polish it with Aegis Pit Polish. Our third special technique involves doing two repairs at once, and it can be simpler than you may think using the Aegis Multi-Repair Kit. First, if you're dealing with two different vehicles, park them close together and set up a repair fixture on each brake. Attach the adapters to the two fixture chambers. This allows you to use one pump for two repair fixtures. Attach the pump to one fixture. Open the adapter shutoff valve by pushing in here. Now you're ready to establish pressure or vacuum. When you've established vacuum or pressure, close the valve by pushing this tab. Notice that the sleeve here pops out. That takes care of this repair fixture. Disconnect the pump and drape the assembly hose over the top fixture knob. Don't push in the valve. You'll release any vacuum or pressure. Now you're free to go on to the second repair. Just hook up the adapter, establish vacuum or pressure, and then disconnect the pump. Repairing cracks with the Aegis system is also possible but the decision to attempt a repair is up to you. Cracks like these can be repaired either with a syringe or with the Aegis drill. Let's start by looking at a syringe repair. For smaller cracks like this, insert the needle into your polymer bottle and draw some polymer into the syringe. Start at the upper end of the crack and place a drop of polymer on the glass. Insert a corner of a razor blade into the crack. 
Maintain a bead of polymer on the surface and slowly move along the crack, letting capillary action draw the polymer into the crack. Once the crack is filled, cure the polymer. Remove the excess and clean up. However, this will only work if the crack is expanded. Some cracks need a pathway for the polymer to enter under pressure, and the drill can create that pathway. With small cracks, one or two inches long, drill in the center. Larger cracks require the ends to be drilled and may need additional holes drilled. When repairing a large crack, drill a hole at one end. Set up the fixture with polymer and pressurize to 25 PSI. When the polymer flows one inch beyond the chamber, cover the crack with a mylar square. If the polymer did not beat on the surface of the glass, place the polymer on the crack to hold the mylar square in position. Continue to cover the flow of polymer until it stops. Remove the fixture and cure the filled crack. Next, drill a hole on the other end and repeat the procedures. If the break does not fill, more holes are required. Cure each section of the crack before you move on to the next. Before we look at some troubleshooting procedures, let me show you two accessories to increase your repair capability. This fixture chamber assembly with the small quad ring will allow you to work with greater pump pressure for faster polymer fill and without applying excess pressure to the windshield. However, this chamber assembly will only work on brakes that have a pit opening smaller than the inside diameter of the chamber. When using this chamber, screw this bushing in the fixture chamber opening and follow the procedure for setting up a fixture on a windshield. After you have centered the pit in the opening, prep the quad ring. Screw the chamber into the bushing until it is in contact with the glass. Give it a quarter of a turn. Add 0.1 cc of polymer and continue on with the repair procedure. The small quad ring allows you to use pump pressure in excess of 40 psi with minimum pressure on the glass. This larger chamber assembly is excellent for doing repairs on vertical windshields or when you have two impact points within 5 eighths of an inch of each other. To set up this chamber, push the foot toward the suction cup until it stops. Raise the foot upward until it stops. Lock in this position by tightening the side knob firmly. Thread the ball plug into the chamber opening until the ball is protruding through the bottom. With the yoke in the forward position, place the fixture onto the glass with the ball directly over the brake. Attach the fixture to the windshield. Prep the quad ring with polymer Back out the knurled nut far enough so the chamber body can be slipped into position. Screw the ball plug until the foot starts to lift and then give it a half turn. Rotate the chamber body so the quick connect plug is at the top. Minor adjustments can be made to locate the impact point into the lower half of the fixture chamber by loosening the top knob. Tighten the fixture chamber down. Add 0.15 cc of polymer and continue on the repair process. Keep an eye on the quad ring. If the seal begins to expand and the polymer level drops, quickly release the pressure and bring it up slowly to a lower pressure and then continue on with the repair. Now let's look at some troubleshooting procedures that can help if problems arise during a repair. In this repair, you can see bubbles coming from the quad ring. These bubbles indicate a leaking seal. First, make sure the fixture is firmly attached. You should not be able to see the red line in the fixture plunger. If simple repumping doesn't solve the problem, remove the fixture and clean the glass carefully. Use your finger to put a little glycerin on the suction cup. Rub it in well, then wipe it clean with a lint-free cloth. Sometimes dust particles or hair can break the vacuum by keeping the outer ring from sealing tightly. If the fixture appears to be sealed tightly, try loosening the fixture chamber a half turn, rotate it slightly back and forth a few times, and then retighten. If you continue to see bubbles coming from the quad ring, the quad ring may be contaminated or scratched. Remove the connector hose and remove the fixture chamber. Again, clean the glass.
Check the fixture chamber groove and quad ring for contamination. Clean or change the quad ring. Set up the fixture chamber again. Add 0.15 cc of polymer and finish the remaining vacuum time or hold for two minutes, whichever is longer. You may also see quad ring ruptures during the pressure cycle and there are several causes for this. The suction cup on the repair fixture loses suction. If you can see the red line, the fixture will need to be reattached. If the side knob is not tightened, you may also cause the seal to rupture. Check the side knob and top knob for proper tightness by lifting on the leg. If it moves, reposition the leg and retighten. Check to make sure the fixture foot is positioned properly, flat against the glass with the heel no more than a sixteenth of an inch off the glass, while the toe rests directly on the glass. The finger grip on the razor blade is a good gauge of the ideal height of the heel from the glass. Loosen the side knob and reposition the foot if needed. After you have identified the cause of the rupture and corrected it, you can continue with the repair. Sometimes you'll find that a brake will run during your pressure cycle. If that happens, release pressure immediately. Then rebuild pressure slowly, watching the crack carefully. Keep pressure lower, but leave it on longer. If you have a brake that won't fill with polymer, like this one, the problem is a blocked impact point. Open up the impact point with a razor blade or the Aegis drill. You'll run into some brakes that look like there is simply no impact point. The only way to make such a repair is to use the Aegis drill to create one. After you have opened the impact point or established a new one, continue on with the repair, making sure you've positioned the chamber correctly over the impact point. Always make sure the polymer covers the impact point. Anytime the air bubble is below it, add more polymer. Anytime you add polymer, pull the vacuum. When the bubbles stop or slow down, continue on with the repair process. If the brake continues not to fill when you're in the pressure cycle, back off the chamber to remove pressure on the glass without losing the seal. If you rupture the seal, disconnect the hose. Back off the chamber one half turn, rotate back and forth, and retighten. Add polymer and attach the hose. Continue on with the repair using less air pressure than when you started. Occasionally, radiant cracks on a brake won't fill, as you can see here. Longer time under pressure usually takes care of this. Another technique is to let capillary action do the work. Disconnect the hose and unscrew the fixture a half turn. This relieves stress on the glass and lets the polymer flow along the cracks. You may also encounter a cloudy repair, which usually means you've got some moisture in the repair. Moisture makes the polymer turn milky. If this happens, continue the vacuum cycle until the moisture is drawn out. Then, without releasing vacuum, loosen the fixture knob and rotate the chamber off the brake keeping the polymer from flowing into the brake. Then, clean up and start over again with clean polymer. You may not be able to remove all the moisture from the brake. If moisture is present, dry it with a heat gun or hair dryer before you start the repair. Be careful, too much heat can make a brake run. When heat is used, always allow time for cooling. Our last troubleshooting tip is to make sure the batteries in the UV lamp have power. Aegis recommends 1.5 volt alkaline batteries. Each battery must put out 1.35 volts to light the lamp. Batteries under 1.3 volts will not power the lamp and will need to be replaced. If the lamp continues not to operate, check the position of the batteries in the lamp. The Aegis system has been engineered to professionally repair a variety of windshield brakes. With the techniques you've seen here, 
and the procedures detailed in your printed manual, you should have no problems recognizing and repairing brakes in the shop or on the road. If you have any questions about the Aegis system or the techniques we've shown you, contact an Aegis representative.